Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome to our episode number 62, our 62nd installment of the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series. So we are glad that you continue to support and choose to learn about this COVID-19 journey with us every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. So last week po, no, we had our third virtual international conference about the Delta variant. And today, will be sort of a continuation of that discussion regarding our preparations for the Delta variant. Uh, uh, but slightly different from last week, wherein we learned uh, different scenarios from our international guests. Our speakers for this webinar will be coming in from uh, several different parts of the country. And today, our focus will be on our situation and our preparedness of our different hospitals here. In the Philippines, I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. Always a pleasure to be with all of you during our regular Friday lunch date. I always look forward to our Fridays naman po, no? And not just because I'm able to join each and every one of you dito po sa ating regular Friday lunch habit, but also especially because I'm able to share hosting duties with my mentor and my partner, Uh, Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado, who has always uh, really regaled us uh, with all of these uh, um, different insights po for our webinar. Uh, Dr. Susie? Hi, Raymond. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Wherever you are, we're greeting you. We hope you're all okay. This is your credible online community and it's credible not because of the speakers but because of you, our frontliners na Talaga namang ano no, uh, masugid right, Raymond na tagahanap ng tamang impormasyon at talagang nakakatulong sa mga nakakatulong sa mga taong nangangailangan ng ng tamang impormasyon. So today, nako Raymond, I'm so starstruck by our, by our lineup of guests. You're going to meet some of our outstanding hospital directors in the hosp- in the in the Philippines. And uh, today we're going to not we're not gonna have a series of presentations, but more a uh, kwentuhan, ano? More a conversation around ano ba ready na ba tayo? No, ano ba ang kailangan malaman ng ating mga frontliners tungkol dito sa Delta variant? Chaka pa ano bang paghanda natin? So please stay with us. This is going to be a great. Uh, I think it's gonna be a great webinar. We've got some very interesting. And nakikita ko nga eh yung mga ibang Uh, hospitals, yung happy nyo, nandito kaya nanonood kayo, no? very good kayo. Ha? So uh, it, it's great to have all the Metro Manila hospitals around. Um, a lot watching from Mindanao. And um, I think Raymond will tell us later who's watching from outside of the Philippines. Over to you, Raymond. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Susie. So for those who are joining us for the very first time, Our webinar episode for today will be a little bit unconventional in the sense that it will just be really a uh, well an informal uh, if you want to call it a conversation among all of the different leaders and directors of the different uh, hospitals here in the Philippines as we prepare uh, for the Delta variant po, which is really top of mind for us for a few weeks now. So wag po kayong ma- magugulat kung ganun po ang ating uh, Well, really a setup or arrangement because that's uh, really very very different from what uh, we have been doing for the past 61 webinars. Speaking of 61 webinars po, no? for those who are asking, all 61 webinars are archived or can be viewed po in the playback of the YouTube channel ng TVUP. So if you go to www.youtube.com and then type in the search bar TVUP, you'll be able to see all the 61 previous web uh, webisodes or uh, webinar episodes po natin para dito sa Stop COVID Deaths webinar series. I'd also like to acknowledge po, no, baka uh, we might not have uh, time just because it will be really a jam-packed webinar to acknowledge the very hardworking team behind the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series po. No? Maraming maraming salamat po to each and every one of you. And for those who are asking, I, do, I know we have been receiving uh, really uh, tens uh, of uh, inquiries as it relates to the certificates po. No? Ito po ang itsura ng certificate na we will be handing out uh, at least for those who are eligible Uh, to receive it and to be eligible you should have spent at least 50% of the webinar duration uh, dito po sa Zoom uh, and if you feel that you should have received or we may have missed 
uh, sending out your certificate for any of the previous 61 webinars, please let us know. Please note na hindi po namin sinasubmit it sa isang araw po lahat ng certificates because there's a limit to the number of certificates that we can send out in a day. So please bear with us if you're not a, if some of your friends or family members have been able to receive theirs but yours po ay maybe uh, stuck in the mail or got delayed in the mail po kumbaga. Okay, sige po. Uh, Dr. Susie? Okay, thank you very much Raymond. Um I think uh for today we really are um going to try to understand a little bit more what kind of preparedness we need to do on the ground in the field no? and um we will have uh we will have nakikita ko nga dito sa chat eh, no parang ang daming mga ano eh ang daming mga nakikinig nga from the hospitals represented by our hospital chief so this is really great i'd like you to use the chat box and the q and a box for questions and i'm not sure Raymond if later we have some time to pick up uh questions from the audience but uh, live, but we certainly will look at the questions that you ask in the Q and A, and um, we we can direct your questions to to our special guests and panelists, and and um, we'll all learn. I think we are we are in for uh, a lot of learning about what's happening in different parts of the Philippines. So, without further ado, let me start by uh, okay. So our our um, introductory speaker is not new to you he is in fact one of the uh one of the organizers of stop covid deaths and i i'm very honored to welcome the special advisor of the national task force against covid19 dr ted herbosa ted welcome hi susie and uh, thank you for uh, asking me to do the welcome again and uh, uh good morning to everybody good afternoon already to everybody can i go ahead susie yeah go ahead go ahead yeah, so go susie ahead. raymond uh, Yusek Dumama, Chancellor uh, Benchit Padilla of UP Manila, our speakers, former secretary now with the Red Cross, uh, Secretary Pauline Ubial, our hospital directors, Dr. Jose Chan of the Northern Mindanao Medical Center, Dr. Julius Durlon of Corazon Montelibano Medical Center, Dr. Vincent Balanag of the Lung Center of the Philippines, oh, my colleague, Dr. Raul Winston Andutan of Maria Reina Hospital Xavier University, and of course, Dr. Rehina Berba, of the, the head of our uh, Hospital Infection Control Unit at the UPPGH. And to all of you participants, uh, the regulars and the new ones, welcome to this webinar hosted by the University of the Philippines. Ready na ba kayo sa Delta variant? Uh, we have the Delta variant or the B1.6, 1.7.2, detected last October 2020 in India. Now, it is found in over 93 countries. Uh, we saw very vivid images of the Delta surge uh, in, uh, in, in the, that overwhelmed the health system of India. We saw graphic pictures of people lining up for hospitals, emergency rooms that were filled up, and several funeral pyres in uh, public places, which were very graphic images of how uh, the, the, the Delta variant can actually create havoc in a health system. Currently, we still have the lowest number of active cases of COVID-19, uh, less than 50,000 in the whole country, whereas all other countries around us in the region, in Southeast Asia, have higher numbers. Our daily cases have plateaued to about 6,000 uh, for several weeks, but our neighbors have over five to 10 times that number of daily cases in Indonesia, in Myanmar, in Thailand, and in Malaysia. They are all struggling to fight this vicious variant. We too cannot be complacent as we start to suffer uh, pandemic fatigue. This marathon of a pandemic battle against SARS-CoV-2 and its later variants are beginning to have a toll on all of us. To date, we have identified through the UP Philippine Genome Center, 47 cases of the Delta variant in over 8,000 samples that underwent full genome sequencing. Prior to last week, 19, only 19 Delta variants were found among uh, mostly returning Filipinos and there was no community transmission 
uh, yet identified. All were imported cases, and they had one death. Uh, last week, however, the Philippine Genome Center and the Department of Health reported an additional 16 cases of the Delta variant identified by full genome sequencing, and 11 cases were found to be samples from the community. Only five were from returning OFW. So those 11 cases had no history of travel. As our epidemiologists conduct uh, intensive case investigation and aggressive contact tracing to document the epidemiologic linkages, the DOH and PGC just yesterday reported another 12 uh, cases of the Delta variant identified in the Philippine genome, uh, full genome sequencing, six of whom actually come from region three. And this brings our total to 47 cases. And today, I think already three deaths. So how many Delta variants are now ongoing transmission in our different regions? It seems it has been found in almost all uh, the three major island groups. We need to do aggressive surveillance, test, trace, treat. We need to do the PDITR, and we need to actually uh, vaccinate. Uh, PDITR stands for prevent, detect, isolate, treat, and reintegrate. But we need to vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. Obviously, the April surge we experienced from the alpha and the beta variants are just dress rehearsals for the Delta that is about to come. Today, we will hear from the USEC of the Visayas Mindanao, the five hospital directors, two are from Luzon, one from the Visayas, and two from Mindanao. We will hear how they are all bracing for the uptick of cases of a variant with a reported reproductive number anywhere from five to six. So let's all learn and listen as we prepare our health facilities and our health system for this oncoming Delta surge. Let's stop COVID Delta deaths. Let's plan, prepare, and prevail. Good afternoon and mabuhay to everyone. Okay, thank you very much. That's Dr. Ted Herbosa, the uh, Special Advisor of the National Test Task Force on COVID-19. And um, Ted, please join us for the panel. Uh, we're going to have a very interesting a uh, very interesting discussion. So before we go to our first uh, our first speaker, uh, we are going to have uh, a video of our webinar last week. Apparently, Raymond, ilan yung nanood ng webinar natin on the playback? You know, well, at, at least for the playback, no, uh, mga uh, nearing six thousand na po eh, when I was uh, viewing it. Uh, at least for the playback, so that does not even count. Everyone who was actually watching it live, uh, those other um, views in other uh, in our other social media accounts. So, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat po ng mga nanood last week uh, for our third virtual international conference. Uh, but at least for this webinar, Dr. Susie, we have more than 3,000 registrants. Uh, and we understand that there are multiple watch parties going on. So, thank you po ulit. Oh, lalo na yung mga watch party sa ano, Corazon Locks in Montilivan, no? Memorial <laughs> Center, marami. At saka yung sa ano, sa Lang Center. Okay, so, all right. So, um, you know, for those who missed it, or just to refresh our memory, uh, TVUP has prepared a um, a summary. Like, uh, you know, katulad ng mga sa TV series na last week, oh, di ba? Last week on uh, stop COVID, uh, stop COVID deaths. Eto na, okay. So TVUP over to you. I would surmise that there is hardly a person who is not personally affected by this pandemic. Could we have done better? Local cases of the Delta variant have been detected. The Delta variant was first detected in late uh, 2020. And you have heard from Dr. Franco that it carries actually quite a number of mutations. We need to be very, very vigilant. What actually is very sinister about uh, the Delta variant is because it carries these four mutations. This one is showing that the more contagious the variant, the higher the basic reproduction numbers. Delta is 50% more transmissible than alpha. So why do mutations occur? 
It occurs because it's part of the evolution of the virus. It is more contagious, it's more transmissible. And with the Delta variant, there has to be a shift in strategy against this changing enemy. I saw once more how important it is to have a good healthcare system. Once you achieve herd immunity, the, the transmission is minimized, even if there are no restrictions, even if there's no mask. The higher the percentage of vaccination, the harder for the virus to transmit in the unvaccinated community. In summary, you have great protection against severe disease, including hospitalization and deaths among all vaccines against all variants. The household transmission is lower and decreased mutations compared to unvaccinated. So the trust now is on three fronts, testing, contact tracing and vaccination. We need to emphasize on testing, isolating, treating and vaccinating people. The first thing we should do is actually vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. The pandemic fatigue is quite high, the level of stress. So that aspects of mental health also need to be taken into consideration. Testing, I think, is more important. And the way forward would be to go for cheaper testing. So that's why uh, besides PCR testing, we have now rolled out point of care testing, which should be cheap, available. Uh, there's hope. Uh, always keep yourself uh, healthy and safe. Like when you are taking care of others, it is equally important that you take care of yourself as well. Follow all the universal precautions, get vaccinated and keep your family also protected. Thank you. Eventually, we will overcome this and other variants. We learn from experience and we must continue to be vigilant. The universal health care is indeed promising and a must as we continue to face the COVID pandemic and prepare for the next pandemic. We just have to be ready to adapt, recalibrate and make changes in the policies as we move and face the new variant. We will be able to manage COVID pandemic better if universal health care is in place. So as we fight this pandemic, let us also continue to work for the full implementation of universal health care in the Philippines. Thank you so much, TVUP, for that really very, very quick uh, overview of our episode last week for our third virtual international conference. For this week's episode, we have a total of seven speakers coming in from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So we found it uh, just really appropriate that our first speaker will be the one to brief us on what we are supposed to do in case of a surge, uh, especially because uh, he's an undersecretary from the Department of Health. So please welcome to the webinar po, undersecretary for Field Implementation and Coordination Team for Visayas and Mindanao, Dr. Abdullah Domama. Yusek Oka, welcome to the webinar, sir. Simon, I can, yeah, can you see me or uh, hear me? We can hear you, sir, but uh, we cannot see your, there we go, okay. Uh, okay. Whew, I'm sorry, but I, I really had a hard <laughs> time uh, uh, connecting, though. So, anyway, I, I may start na to kasi uh, baka ma, ano tayo sa oras. Anyway. Yes, sir, apa. Go ahead, sir, with your talk. Yes, yes. How to be lame in a shaitan regime, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allow me first to extend my courtesies to everyone, to my colleagues, to the other guests, to the experts who are still with us today. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Mayong hapon ka ninyong tanan. I'd like to uh, thank the convener of this event for inviting us, most especially to our boss, uh, Yusek uh, uh, Susi Mercado, to shed some light on concerns regarding COVID-19 no? uh, response and management, especially now that the more dreaded Delta variant is looming around the country. As you may all know, this variant is of utmost concern, not only by our local authorities, but globally as well. Even the, w expert, the WHO experts are explicitly, explicitly saying that this variant should be should be taken more seriously because unlike the former variant, this is highly infectious and causes more severe effects to, that, to those who get in, uh, infected. Anyway, let me take off from a different note. I think uh, I sounded like too threatening at the start. It was intentional. Po. I was just simply sharing insights and information for the benefit of everyone. It pays to be informed and more importantly, if the information is translated into positive behavioral change. 
Moving on, let me say that the Department of Health, in cooperation with the IETF, is framed at addressing this situation from both uh, preventive and curative or uh, treatment aspect. As the National Action Plan against COVID-19 is executed using the PDITR framework, the DOH is intensifying its uh, campaign on infection and prevention control uh, through the BIDA solution and BIDA Bastonero Bastonera initiatives. Hindi na po lingid sa ating kalaman ng uh, ito, no? ito po yung uh, minimum public health protocols na madalas nating uh, inaanunsyo na dapat sundin ng mamamayan. Number one, B, bawal ang walang mask of facial. Number two, I, isanitize ang kamay uh, ng madalas o kaya iwas sa crowded areas. No? And number three, dumistansya ng at least isang metro sa katabi o alamin ang A, alamin ng tamang informasyon. Ang mga nagbanggit ko po ay hindi ito katanghitsip. Ito ay napatunayan ng mga eksperto na ligtas, epektibo at madaling uh, mga paraan upang maputol ang chain of infection. Kapag uh, mga ito ay nakaugalian o naging habit ng bawat isa, magiging matagumpay ang ating laban sa COVID-19. Merong haka-haka na it, na it only takes 21 days from a To, to form a habit. No? Maybe we all uh, should try learning this one. And I mean, it's a good habit to learn. At kayo naman ay meron ng, kung kayo naman ay meron ng ganitong habit, uh, kung maaari ay maging bida bastonero, bastonero na rin tayo. Ito po yung, may apat po itong ano, uh, component. Kumbaga. Number one, inform, correct, remind, and appreciate. Meron po akong ginawa dito, ICRA, I-C-R-A. Madali lang pong uh, intindihin ito. Ipaalam, no? inform, ipaalam sa mga kasamahan natin ang konsepto ng bida solusyon kung hindi pa nila ito alam. Number two, correct. I in iwas to ang mali at pagsuway sa minimum public health protocols. Marami ho sa ating mga kababayan na ang, ang kanilang uh, mas ay umabot na sa baba. Yung kanilang mga face shield, ginagawang uh, tawag ito, uh, 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 tawag ito, yung... Sun visor. Ba? Visor. Sun visor. Uh, kaya ho, yun, yun, yun ho, yung ano, no? kailangan natin iwas to yun. And remind, ipaalaala sa mga nakalimot ang pagsunod sa bida. Of course, number uh, four is appreciate. Pahalagaan ho natin o kilalanin natin yung mga may matutuwid na matusunod sa alituntunin. So muli, ang prevention strategy ay nagiging, uh, uh, magiging tamagumpay lamang kung ang bawat individual ay susunod o makipag-cooperate po. However, I, I would be too naive to say that everyone will abide by the rules. That would be too good to be true. Hence, The department is also into vaccinating all our eligible population as part of its preventive measures. In this case, po, it is clear that we do acknowledge that this, the contribution of uh, uh, our healthcare workers. Thus, they come on top of the list to be vaccinated first. This is the manifestation of the government's concern for safety, security, uh, welfare, uh, of our frontliners, not to mention the science behind this decision. So in general, it is imperative that in any worst case scenario, the health system should be the last, if not never, to break down. And the HRH, as part of the entire health system, should be taken care of accordingly. Buhat naman po sa national data, pinapakita na pinakamataas na fatality ng COVID-19 eh, nasa mga senior citizens po at mga Merong mga comorbidities. So uh, sa pagsulpot ng Delta variant, kailangan natin paigtingin at bilista ng pagpabakuna po sa kanila. At kapag naging maagap tayo sa pagpabakuna sa kanila, babawasan niyo po yung posibleng hospitalization, thus reducing hospital congestion, thus helping our care, healthcare uh, system, thus helping our frontliners. Let us prevent them from getting infected and avoid them from suffering severe effects of COVID-19. How? By getting them vaccinated immediately. Otherwise, if we don't vaccinate more A2 and A3 priority group, hospitals will be congested again. 
since these groups are at most risk for hospitalization and death. Karagdagan po sa prevention strategy ng Department of Health ay yung pakipagtulungan sa mga local na pamahalaan upang mapaigting ang surveillance sa lahat ng lugar sa Pilipinas. Hindi lang po sa Visayas, Mindanao, lahat po ng lugar sa Pilipinas. Kailangan nating maunahan ng Delta variant bago pa man ito manalasa at maghasik ng lagim sa pamamagitan ng national government-enabled responses, local government-led responses, at people-centered responses. Ngayon, nais ko pong kunti lang po ito, baka alam na niyo ito. No, nais kong ibahagi yung four-door strategies ng ating pinapatupad. Door one, may pintong isa. Number one na pinto. Ito po ay pag-implement ng travel restriction as a separate uh, and primary level of defense to supplement the currently uh, implemented health protocols. Yung pagbaban po, ginagawa na po natin ito. Number two is making sure, yung door two, that safeguards are implemented such as screening, testing, quarantine at points of entry to lessen the risk of incoming travelers from triggering the local spread of the variants of concern. Yung pangatlong pinto po, yung door three, is para sa mga LGU to strengthen the implementation of PDITR. Alam natin ito, prevention, detection, isolation, treatment, and rehabilitation or recovery strategies to immediately detect and isolate probable possible COVID-19 cases. And number four po, pang-apat na pinto is having a strong health system and critical, uh, strong critical capacity system versus a surge of cases to ensure a prompt and uh, proper COVID-19 management. And most is importantly, continuity of essential services. Ayun lahat po natin binabang, binanggit ay yung puntong prevention pa lamang. On the other hand, the treatment strategy the DOH is improving and increasing the number of facilities which can accommodate and handle COVID-19 cases, including po yung public sector. Huwag natin kalimutan, napaka-importante uh, partner po yun. The infrastructure side of things are all, also already in motion. Likewise, making sure of the availability of life-saving drugs, medicines, and equipment, of course, and the PPE. Yung HRH, HRH complement po natin is also being addressed. The department has called to duty other professionals from different national government agencies like the PNP, BFP, and the AFP. We have also identified several modes of additional allowances for them, no? So just take care of them talaga, including but not limited to special risk allowance. You must have uh, heard of that, no? SRA, active duty hazard pay, or AADHP, etc. These are actually small amounts for, for the sacrifices they are enduring. Uh, in addition to manage possible surge, we need to ensure the health system is prepared regardless of community quarantine qualification. We need to have enough COVID-19 beds in TTMFs and of course ICUs, including medicines and even oxygen tanks. We need layers of protection against COVID-19, especially the Delta variant. No single strategy is enough to protect the people and to protect our health system. Strict adherence. Nakakarin din na po ito, but uh, totoo po ito. Strict adherence to MHPS coupled with vaccination will help us win the race. But more importantly, to win this battle, means we need to win the undecided. Those who are undecided to get vaccinated must be persuaded to get their jobs now. Let those who have completed their inoculation be the living witnesses and testimonies of the vaccine's safety and efficacy. Together, let us win the undecided and together, let us win the race. Thank you very, very much for listening. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Okay, thank you very much. That's uh, Idol, Undersecretary Okang Dumama. Alam niyo yan si Yusek Okang. Uh, Napakabilisi niya, no? I've been mm -hmm. with him in the field for polio, measles, and he's on the ground. He knows what's happening and what's going on, no? So I think our audience, particularly Ka Okang, ang mga... Uh, mga Mindanao hospitals, no? Sambuanga, Bukidnon, makikita nyo, South Cotabato, 
So many of them are watching and it's really great to have you here. At magandang nakikita kitang nakakurbata kasi <laughs> pag nakikita kita, <laughs> eh, parang, parang panggera na. So, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, thank you so much for your message. No, I think it's 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 really great to have you here. Uh, Yusek Okang is in charge of field operations of Visayas and Mindanao. And so, okay, Raymond said earlier what we're going to do is a little different. We're going to go straight into a panel discussion. So allow me to introduce our star-studded panelists for today. We're going to start with uh, former Health Secretary Pauline Obial. So, Pao, please open your camera. And uh, she's now head of the Biomolecular Laboratories of the Philippine Red Cross, but is also handling vaccination. Of course, from the Corazon Loxin Montilibano Memorial Regional Hospital, which has the most participants, I think, today. Uh, very well-known doctor, Dr. Julius Drilon, okay, the medical center chief from Bacolod City, Negros Occidental. We also have from the Philippine General Hospital, Suki so natin. Si uh, Dr. Nina Burba, and uh, we all are very calm when we listen to Nina because she's so soft-spoken. Pero talagang ano ito lumalaban talaga sa virus ito. Head of the Philippine General Hospital Hospital Infection Control Unit from Mindanao, Dr. Raul Winston Anduta, Medical Director of the Maria Reina Javier University Hospital, Cagayan de Oro City, Misamis Oriental. Dr. Jose Chan, the Medical Center Chief of Northern Mindanao Medical Center, Cagayan de Oro also, Misamis Oriental. And from Metro Manila, uh, again, uh, Suki na to, no? lagi nyo siyang nakikita, si Dr. Vince Balanag of the Philippine Lung Center. Welcome everyone. Um, and we're going to start with our first question. Uh, what we're going to do is Raymond and I will fire uh, different questions. And any of you can... Can answer the questions. We'd like to ask you to open your uh, open your video. Um, I think Ted Herbosa had to leave. Ted, are you still here? Okay, so I think I'm still here. Okay, here. okay. Can, okay you join us more. Okay, speaking engagement pa to si Ted. Eh. Pero while you're here, please uh, please join us. All right. So first question. Um, when you heard, so we selected hospitals where there was uh, known cases of the Delta variant. And I think the first question is, when you heard that uh, Delta variant is found in your, uh, in your city or your province, what came to your mind? What was your first, what was your first reaction? So we're gonna start with Dr. Uh, Dr. Julius Drilon of uh, Bacolod City. And what came to your mind when they said, Nako, meron dito sa Region 6? Um, maraming salamat. Uh... TVUP for having me. It's it's really an honor. And good afternoon, Susie, and uh, to my fellow panelists. Um, honestly, personally, um, we we were expecting it already. When uh, you say uh, how do how do we feel? We were expecting it because our our philosophy is to assume uh, that it's already in the community, and uh, we have to strengthen our defenses. So, um, uh, hindi actually po kami nagulat na mayroon ng Delta variant uh, roaming around uh, Western Visayas. And we do not really know where they are, primarily because um, uh, we lack the genomic uh, surveillance um, in Western Visayas to be sent to Philippine Genome Center. So, um, whatever variant that is, uh, uh, we have doubled our defenses, primarily geared towards our healthcare workers. So um, um, uh, for us, it was not surprising, to be honest. Susan. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Thank oh, you. Oh. How about, uh, no, from Cagayan de Oro, so we have the two hospital chiefs from uh, both a government hospital and from a private hospital. Raul, ikaw muna. Nung narinig mong biglang uh, uh, press uh, conference. Nung narinig ko na, uh, uh, we have uh, one. Oh. I don't know if uh, it was fortunate that we, that we have one, so we can be given the opportunity to uh, experience uh, how to handle uh, Delta cases. And uh, the first thing uh, I did was communicate with the uh, CHO if there is really additional measures, communicate with the stakeholders in the hospital. And the overwhelming uh, uh, answer was 
no additional measures for the Delta. So uh, I, I thought that uh, maybe our priority in the private hospital is not really the logistics, the physical structures, but the priority should be on how to, how to hold on to our nurses. We all know that uh, nurses are being pirated, okay? And how to maintain their health and how to maintain their mental health to be motivated. So those are the things that came into my mind. Those are my priorities. It's not stocking up on respirators, stocking up on oxygen, but I give a premium to my manpower because I believe that every logistic, every additional um, physical structure will be useless uh, unless you have that uh, a dedicated manpower. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Raul. Dr. Jore of uh, Northern Mindanao Medical Center, Kagen de Oro also, uh, what went through your head? What were you thinking when they said, oh, sa press con, merong region 10? Uh, good morning, Dr. Susi. Regarding the Delta, I didn't expect that to happen, that uh, to arrive that fast in Cagayan de Oro. If ever there's a Delta, it should be there in Metro Manila first. <laughs> it should be the last to, to know that our ha that happening in Cagayan de Oro. Actually, we didn't expect that to, to be here this soon already. So only also to know that the cases here, some of the cases are uh, no have no history of travel. So probably it has been here for a while already. Uh -huh. Yeah. But according to the data, those index cases has no uh, history yet for those who have been close contact with them uh, to be positive for the variant. So that's how I look at it. And when we learned that there's a Delta in Gagayan de Oro, it, it, it uh, kept us thinking that we have to act again and redo something for what we have been doing for the last one year. Mm -hmm. So that's how we look at Delta now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jory Chan of uh, the Northern Mindanao Medical Center. Vince, Vince Balanang of the Lung Center. Uh, meron ba kayong kaso sa Lung Center? Oh, well, uh... not allowed to say. Oh, sige. <laughs> Uh, as far uh, what I can say is uh, merong positive na na test sa amin. Okay. So that's all I can give. But uh, well, Lung Center has been facing uh, several surges already and uh, for us, uh, probably a, a, a rise in Delta variants could signal another surge and a lot of cases coming to our hospital. Yun na lang yung naisip namin kasi regardless of the cause, regardless of the variant, we will uh, treat these patients the same way. No? So basically, it will just mean perhaps an increase in the number of cases we will have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vince Balana. Um, Nina, Nina Burba of PGH. Nina, were you surprised na yeah. meron ng Delta variant o alam mo na noong pa? <laughs> so kami, ako ang... Natakot ako talaga. Uh, medyo intense yung fear ko kasi uh, although we were really expecting na magkakaroon na ng Delta very soon, um, fortunately, medyo prepared kami and um, I'm very glad. Medyo na-close na rin namin yung mga cases. Eh. So, I think pwede ko naman sabihin na dun sa first week when uh, Dr. Ted said, di ba, may 11 cases na local, tatlo dun nagfall sa PGH and um, I'm very glad that our healthcare workers were, you know, behaving themselves, lahat nag-follow ng usual protocol. So wala pong na-infect sa amin despite the exposure to the original three cases na Delta. Okay, thank you Nina. Um, Dr. Pauline Obial, Pao. Siyempre, yung Red Cross all over the country. Yes. What were, thoughts, um, yeah. what were your thoughts when you heard there was Delta variant in the Philippines? Uh, um, I, I was thinking when we were listening to the news, ano, it's not that we don't have Delta 
variant at that point in time. It's just that we don't detect it. Because even as we have 271 uh, laboratories right now for testing COVID, uh, our testing rates are still very low. It's 30 to 40,000 per day. When our target at the start of the pandemic was 50 to 60,000, we have not attained that even now that we have more laboratories. So I think that uh, we need to ramp up testing. Y yun yung pinaka ano. Uh, if we're not reporting Delta or uh, ilan lang, 47 lang ang nare-report natin na Delta because we're not testing enough. Yeah, okay. So the importance of, of testing, no? Um, let, let's go to that, to testing. Um, are we, okay, so we're not testing enough. And what is the situation on the ground? So prior to our coming on the air, we were having this conversation. And Dr. Drilon, you were talking about uh, discrepancies in testing. Uh, would you like to talk about that a little bit more? Um, thank you. Thank you, Susie. Um, the uh, the situation uh, in 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 our area, uh, primarily um, uh, Corazon Loxin. Let me give you a little rundown on uh, our coverage area. Uh, Corazon Loxin is located in Bacolod City. It has a uh, population of around uh, six hundred thousand, more or less, uh, to six hundred fifteen thousand. So our molecular lab, molecular lab, which is a collaboration between Bacolod City and the Department of Health in Corazon Loxin, handles most of the samples given by uh, Bacolod uh, City Epidemiologic and Surveillance Unit or Bacolod CESO. 90% um, of the samples in the community are sent to us. And um, on the height of, uh, on the height of, uh, of the positivity rate uh, in um, around June um, and July, um, there we, we noticed that uh, the, um, uh, the testing are, are not sufficient. You know, that uh, I think that uh, validates uh, my uh, former secretary's uh, observation that uh, we, we, uh, the, the testing uh, remains to be desired. Uh, uh, it defies the epi epidemiologic uh, 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 theory that the more positives that you have, uh, the more aggressive that you should be. But we have not reached uh, uh, the, the, at least the minimum uh, as we have uh, uh, calculated of around 500 tests a day. And uh, the, the maximum we had was only like 300 in one day. And if we are going to, without going to the details, if we are going to look at the, uh, the, the graph of our testings, um, it, it's like a roller coaster curve. So it's an up and down, up and down, uh, never up, never plateaus in terms of testing. And, um, and that's, um, that we are not getting uh, the real picture of the community in, in that case. So um, um, in, in terms of testing, um, I think uh, the, the, overall, um, uh, the overall rate uh, should, uh, should, should increase uh, so that we will know the, the status uh, in, in the community. It was very important to us because uh, we also uh, base our predictions uh, and forecasting uh, based on this testing. So we, we, we closely monitor the, uh, the testing uh, numbers, uh, the, the positivity rate, um, so that uh, we can prepare uh, our facility better if we are seeing a lot of uh, individuals being tested. Uh, as of now, um, the case fatality rate is quite high. It's around 2.32. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, numbers uh, are not really um, are not really nice to look at. Um, the 
we have we have uh, increased the number of our COVID beds uh, just in case um, we will be seeing another spike in uh, in the positivity rate. Um, but um, overall, uh, uh, we still need a lot of tests, as advocated by the uh, the experts uh, all over the world about testing. So um, that, that is uh, what's happening uh, with us, uh, Susie. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Julius. Let me ask our two doctors from Cagayan de Oro. No? Uh, is this the same thing you're experiencing na mukhang kulang ang testing and that uh, you have more patients who are dying? Is this correct? Uh, anyone, Raul or Jore, whoever wants to take uh, the question first. My, my question first is, who, who should be tested? Uh, in our hospital, we only have a maximum capacity of 160 tests a day. So I don't know if uh, that is significant to test a majority of the population. So uh, do we have strategy on who should be tested first? Okay. Uh, how about uh, no, uh, Raul? I sorry. Uh, I I I can answer that, siguro. Okay, yeah, we have to focus testing talaga we, because we cannot test everyone. So the number one uh, priority in testing are the frontliners, yung mga healthcare workers. We test them every two weeks uh, with or without exposure, with or without symptoms. We test frontliners every two weeks so that we protect the patients and we protect the community of frontliners. Then the second priority would be the general population with symptoms. Basta part ka ng general population, you develop symptoms, test immediately. You are a priority. Once nag-positive yan, you test all their contacts. Yun yung contact tracing. We, we don't just test anybody on the street. That's uh, foolhardy. Hindi wise use of resources yan. So... Uh, that's why testing should be focused on the frontliners regularly tested on and on people with symptoms and their contacts. Oh, oh. you said Okang. Mm -hmm. What is your know what is your your view on yeah, this? Yes, yeah, I, I agree with all the the, the uh, no, statements of uh, our co-panelists. Ang uh, akin lang po if siguro uh, the question there is uh, if uh, what what is the uh, requirement or what is the uh, no, no, uh, requirement para matest mo and uh, know that uh, uh, if you're looking for delta variant so para sa akin na uh, una una we should be able to to locate uh, the the no, first the, the, the case first of which area kung nasaan yung uh, yung uh, delta variant yung pangalawa kaya ko nang saga sabi ni uh, uh, former Secretary uh, Pao, that's a uh, waste of resources kung lahat ho natin, lahat ho ay pagbibigyan natin, i-test natin. Pangatlo po, let us all take a look at the capacity of our BGCs. Uh, they're claiming, di ba ho, 750 uh, samples lang po ang natetest nila kapag uh, sa, in five days, no? So, kung 1,000 ang darating dyan, um, yung 750 next round na po yun. so my my ano there is a mixture na yung ating uh, mga merong mga areas that there are uh, suspicious uh, delta variant uh, existence yun ang i-prioritize din po natin so that we be, 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 be able to pick up uh, somehow uh, the cases of delta thank you okay thank you Raymond over to you Thank you, Dr. Susi. Uh, in connection to the statement made by uh, Yusek Okang, can we maybe get po? Are there, I, I mean, I'm just pulling out from one of the Q&As, uh, Yusek Okang, uh, any specific plans of the government in terms of increasing genomic sequencing? Uh, what are exactly limiting po in terms of, uh, the limiting factors in terms of increasing uh, our genomic sequencing efforts? Uh, is it uh, about uh, do we have insufficient machines? Uh, what's the target percentage of sequencing that should be done? 
uh, etc etc and uh, are there any budgetary requirements put uh, Raymond I maybe uh, uh, answer some of those no kasi sa, I'm, I'm sure yung mga taga PGC can answer that also si Yusek Pao uh, Sek Pao uh, Secretary Pao now uh una una yung limitation nung uh, ating PGC it's only in just like uh, what uh, our brother uh, uh, direct Dr uh, Julius Tedon had mentioned earlier the Metro Manila the uh, Visayas and uh, and the Dabao I have been yesterday I was trying to contact the PGC Philippine Genome in uh, center in Dabao pero uh, I failed to uh, contact them. Ngayon pinapakontak ko po pero sigurado ko po ako. Ang limitation diyan is the PGC is only in uh, in uh, the NAS in the Insulosod. Wala ho sa Visayas at saka wala ho sa Mindanao na functional. So feeling ko kung pwede natin kada pa padamihin no, pabigyan natin ng uh, konting atensyon na baka pwede tayong uh, Uh, pwede natin pwede natin i-assess o evaluate kung ano yung mga pangangailangan nila doon at punan natin we will do that in fact uh, during meeting po natin nung isang araw nung Friday i was uh, thinking of uh, uh, prioritizing that kasi talaga namang kailangan kailangan na ho ng Visayas at Mindanao at hindi na ho kailangan i-send pa sa sa Manila in fact in uh, in uh, Bacolod nga sabi ni Julius doon pag pinapadala sa sa CHD na kailangan ka pang tumawid ng uh, dagat at dito sa Mindanao only in Davao at baka uh, pagka nasa kilad kiladjochan ang uh, sample eh aabutin pa ng anim na oras po so we need to somehow ang pinakamaganda is to uh, be able to put up more genome centers in areas Uh, strategically located. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we have uh, mentioned Padilla, no? our, our uh, Chancellor for UP Manila, who, who in fact was behind setting up the Philippine Genome Center even before the pandemic. Menchit, you wanna, I think you can open your, your video and yeah. uh, respond to this. Please go yeah. ahead, Menchit. I, I just want to share with the group that uh, When we planned the Genome Center more than 10 years ago, that was the, the message, time will come when the borders were closed. So we're very happy that government funded it. But you know, it's a very expensive um, center. So the strategy was to, to um, start with Manila to cover all parts of the country. But luckily, about, I think two years ago, we already started the PGC Mindanao and the PGC Visayas. Actually, they're helping already right now. They have the skills, but then there are different levels of genomic testing. So yung, yung ating hinahanap ngayon, uh, yung up to the level of, you know, this level of, you know, analyzing the Delta, Delta variants, it needs additional equipment. So I think they, that's already being addressed by the government right now. And, but I totally agree. But right now they're helping already. Ah. Yung ating PGC Visayas at saka PGC Mindanao tumutulong na. I totally agree we have to increase and I think the government is listening to us and then eventually that will happen. So ako po yung nagpapasalamat sa gobyerno because they listened to us 10 years ago and then two years ago they agreed to fund PGC Visayas and PGC Mindanao. Back to you, Susie. At yeah, gusto ko po sabihin, yung sinasabing 750 tests, I think their turnaround time is about three days right now. So tama kayo, ano, kapag nagpadala ng isang libo, may backlog dun talagang parang 250, no? And the, the, the correct term for the sampling is purposive because you cannot afford to test everybody. Okay. So I think, Menchie, can you explain that a little bit more? Because uh, people now have the expectation na they want to know if they have the Delta variant. That's uh, not okay. possible, right? Uh, uh, if you remember the lecture last week, uh, Dr. Posan was talking about, uh, you know, it needs a certain level of sequencing of testing. So pagkatapos pa natin na nag-positive sa RT-PCR, ipapadala po yan sa, uh, sa Genome Center. And my understanding is that you can, you can actually connect with your RESU and SESU And then they will facilitate the transfer of the of the the material to the Philippine Genome Center. So, ang, ang may understand also is that the, the epidemiology bureau 
is the one uh, assisting the genome center in selecting on which one will be tested for the sequencing. Purposive sampling po ang ginagawa. Kamukha po nung sinabi kanina ni Secretary Pao na uh, we cannot test everybody. So we'll have to decide how they are chosen. And uh, I think, you know, there is a criteria and I, I trust that they, they're, they're working on this. When we have more uh, testing machines to determine the variants, I think we'll be able to do that at the community level at a bigger scale. Okay, so it's like at the beginning of the pandemic when we also had very limited testing. I think we should get to a point where we have more genome sequencing. But yes. uh, short of that, I'd like to ask Mina to talk about, do we know, like for the frontliners, we have doctors and nurses who are listening here right now, no? What, is there a profile for those with the Delta variant? Like I saw a video where they were saying that uh, one of the symptoms that they're seeing in Delta that they're not seeing, they didn't see in Alpha was sinisipon, a runny nose. No, I don't know how true this is. And what is the, parang, you know, is there a rapid course? Because I, I'm going to ask this question again. I sort of asked the question, but uh, anecdotally, we're hearing that people get to the ER and it's too late. Does it happen all of a sudden that people cannot breathe. What do we see in the Delta variant that's a bit different from what we saw in the past with the Alpha variant? So Nina, please go ahead. Oh, so, um, well, ako, I've, I've experienced very few Deltas, no? less, than kung, less than five cases. Pero it seems like the incubation period is much shorter Tapos, um, uh, talagang highly transmissible. So the uh, the patient might tell you na uh, more of the household members were uh, presenting with similar uh, symptoms. Tapos, pero ngayon talaga yung, I think yung pinaka-clincher is kung fully vaccinated ka and then you come down with something that sounds like COVID-19 and then eventually you're tested positive with the RT-PCR pero fully vaccinated ka. Whatever uh, vaccine you receive, talagang dapat magduda na tayo na baka Delta variant yun. So, so for us in PGH, those are some of the guides that we use. So you sa lahat ng mga healthcare workers namin na fully vaccinated and come down with uh, COVID-19 na confirmed we actually line them up for sending to the PGC for uh, whole genome sequencing. In addition to uh, their exposures, Mary's exposures to travelers or they had travel to countries that have uh, uh, confirmed cases of Delta also. Dr. So Jorge is raising his hand. Go ahead, Doc. Dr. Jorge. Go ahead. Not listening. Agration ng hand eh. Joe Chan. Joe. Yeah. yeah. Regarding, the, regarding the experience of Julius, medyo mababa yung sinabi mong 300 a day. We are at 500 to 1,000 a day here. Our positivity is 28.8%. Sinabi mo 40%. So my discrep uh, I think mayroon kang discrepancy dyan sa Bacolod. That's our experience here in our molecular laboratory. So parang mas maraming, mas maraming kaso sa, mas maraming kaso sa Bacolod. Is that what you're saying, Dr. Joren? Well, if, if Dr. G Julius will be heard of his statement about 40% na positivity rate, maraming kaso yan, siguro. <laughs> but ours is 28.8 at 500 to 1,000 a day. Uh, well, uh, can I yeah, go ahead, Paul. Uh, in, um, join in? Yung positivity rate is dependent on the volume of testing also. If you're testing a lot, your positivity rate is low. Like for us here in the Red Cross, our positivity rate is 5% because our, our testing is about 11,000 per day. 
and we test walk-in patients. Yung mga gustong magpa-test, wala lang, gusto lang nila malaman. Parang yun yung nature ng testing ng Red Cross. But if you're testing like patients, symptomatic, talagang tataas yung positivity rate mo. But that's what we're uh, asking government, ano, na sana when there's one positive, merong 40 na contacts for every one positive na matetest. That would uh, ensure that we capture all the possible uh, contacts or spread, uh, uh, parang extent of spread of that particular COVID case. Kasi where will COVID come from? From a COVID case. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's consistent with what Nina is saying, no? that as far as the variant is concerned, one of the things they're seeing is more household infection. And then the other thing she said was if you're fully vaccinated and you test positive on an RT-PCR, most likely COVID variant. Yun. I'm going to ask Vince. Kasi Vince, sa Lang Center, nagkaroon din kayo ng, nagmanage kayo ng Delta variant. Did you notice anything different in the symptoms, the profile, or the course of the disease in the patient? Doc Vince, si Vince. Parang nawala yata si Raymond. Nawala ba si Dr. Balanag? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's here. I'm here. Nawala. Okay. Sige, we'll come back to we'll come back to him when he joins us again. Raymond, I think he's here, uh, Dr. Oh, yeah, Susie. Oh, Vince, yeah. tanong, no? the same question for Nina. Because you've seen uh, Delta variant. Uh, cases in the lung center. Was there anything different that you noticed? Because what we were saying is, okay, kulang tayo sa testing. All right, so we can't and we can't test everyone. But are there other indicators that give us a higher index of suspicion? Na baka may kumakalat na Delta variant. And is there a difference in the symptoms? Is there a difference in the course? What do you see that's different? So yeah, Vince, go ahead. Ano experience sa lung center? Sa lung center, we regularly uh, send samples to the uh, Philippine Genome Center. But uh, ang sinisend lang namin, yung mga uh, threshold cycle of 20 or less. No? Yan yung mga uh, mabilis, mabilis uh, ang uh, number of uh, 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 virus. No? So... Uh, in terms of the Delta, as far as I know, uh, uh, there's just one patient that we have and it was just uh, tested sa atin and uh, isolated outside. No? So we really don't know if we have uh, more uh, Delta right now. Kasi uh, uh, as far as I know, isang case pa lang yun nandito. No? So I cannot uh, probably <laughs> answer ano yung distinguishing fa factor for Delta uh, variants. But sa amin, pag mababa yung uh, cycle threshold, less 20 or less, we send them to the genome center as, kasi possible variants sila. Okay. Thank, thank you, Vince. I'm gonna just going to go back to Nina quickly and then turn over to Raymond. So Nina, if, if any of our hospital chiefs see a sudden surge, parang biglang dumami yung mga kaso, should... And because these hospital chiefs are in areas where the variant has been identified, do we assume that that is the Delta, vi uh, the Delta variant spreading? Um, ako po kasi yung mindset ko is that um, when we manage and we also try to protect our healthcare workers and everybody else from the COVID-19, it probably doesn't really matter kung delta siya or hindi eh. Kasi the, the infection control the infection control precautions should be the same. We really need to just be parang fortify all ports of entry, lahat, uh, lahat ng pwede gawin to protect ourselves from getting the COVID-19, whether delta siya or hindi. Parang ganun po dapat, I think, yung message. Kasi impossible talaga for us to uh, send as much as we can. I think the PGC is really trying its best also to cope with the uh, with the amounts of uh, requests 
to process uh, whole genome sequencing. Pero impossible po talaga. So, ano, on the ground, ano na lang natin, assume at this point that there is already uh, local transmission, assume na everybody who's COVID positive is potentially a Delta variant and protect ourselves and everybody else around us accordingly. Parang ganun, I think ganun po yung mindset and th that's what we're trying to tell all our healthcare workers here in PGH. Yeah. Okay, I just Jamie, like to add... Okay, uh, Pao Pao. Okay, Pao uh, Pao. Uh, what we try to do here at the Red Cross to protect our staff is... Uh, Yun nga, yung sabi ni Dr. Nina Barba, Berba na you assume that the Delta variant is here. So, number one, we stop allowing them to go on leave. Nobody goes home. So, they go to the lab and then go to their quarters, lab and quarters lang for the next four months. They don't eat together. Bawal nang kumain together. So, we have food. You get your food, you eat in your corner. And of course, the minimum health protocols, no touch policy, wear your mask, wear uh, um, hygiene, hand hygiene, and the careful use of PPEs when you're in the lab or when you're collecting the swab or saliva samples. Okay, thank you, uh, Pao. Um, Raymond, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Dr. Susie. There are multiple questions as it relates to the vaccines po, no? and their uh, efficacy. So I'll try to consolidate those questions. Number one would be, uh, maybe this is just a reiteration of what we learned last week. Uh, can, can someone comment on the effectiveness of the vaccines, especially given that Sinovac is the dominant uh, vaccine given to the Filipino population? Uh, kayo, pagka nabakanahan na raw po ba ng Delta, does it also cover for other variants uh, of the COVID-19 var uh, virus? Uh, and um, are there any reports naman po with regards to uh, the level of resistance of the virus well, given all of the um, mutations po uh, right now? Yes, uh, Raymond, according to studies, ano, these are uh, recent studies, wala pang resistance to the any of the vaccines that have been developed. So all the vaccines, Sinovac or what, uh, whatever vaccines, are still um, useful to protect you from the uh, virus. But yun nga, yung sabi natin, they don't protect you from getting the virus. They protect you 100% from getting severe disease. So, pwede ka pa rin magkaroon ng virus even if you're vaccinated. But, uh, yun nga, yung kailangan natin matandaan, yung critical mass, yung herd immunity or population protection. The more people that are vaccinated, the less the chances of spread of any of the variants. Right. So okay. So I think that's a good segue to talk about vaccination in the in the areas where where our hospital chiefs are, um, because in the last webinar that was the main message: vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. When you vaccinate, uh, as as Pao says, um, you could get COVID. It doesn't protect you from not getting COVID, but you won't get seriously ill and you won't die of it. Of course. There, there are probably a few cases where that happens for different reasons, but in general, you don't get severe disease. You have a very low viral load, and therefore you don't uh, infect other people, and the household attack rate is less than 50%. So where are we on vaccinations? I'm going to go to Dr. Julius uh, in Bacolod City. Kamusta naman ang vaccinations sa inyo? Um, okay. Um... Mga last uh, June, uh, our uh, healthcare workers, mga 90% na po ang nabakunahan. Mostly we have uh, Sinovac and AstraZeneca. We have uh, extended this uh, categories to their immediate families and their household members, which we will start by Monday next week. Um, it's worth, uh, I think it's worth mentioning uh, the first batch namin ay puro Sinovac. 
and naka second dose sila and we did some um, uh, antibody uh, testing no two weeks after the second dose and we have very good we have very good results mga 96% has developed antibody above uh, above uh, the uh, uh, the uh, recommended uh, numbers uh, from our controls so um, it showed that um, um, uh, even now that uh, almost 15% of our healthcare workers has been affected since January, um, wala pa pong pumunta sa uh, moderate to severe or directly uh, uh, succumb to COVID. We have, uh, we have two actually uh, fully vaccinated that went into um, severe infection oh. uh, but that uh, we were able to but because of other, uh, other. inherent uh, the, the disease entity mm -hmm. and one actually died but not because of covid no? Na right. po namin. so um, uh, that is basically um, our problem because um, the, our vaccine supplies are not within our controls. So uh, kung ano man ang available ay uh, binibigay po namin. Overall, I think, uh, uh, I don't know the whole status of Negros Occidental, but um, we will we, we definitely uh, need to have a foot race uh, against, <laughs> against COVID. Uh, kung sino mas mabilis, ay yun po ang uh, dapat uh, ay makuha natin. But uh, basically the race is on. Pabilisan po ng bakuna versus the spread. So um, at this point, um, I think we really have to ramp up our, uh, our supplies and uh, more vaccinators and uh, should be uh, employed and uh, we should vaccinate uh, as fast as we can uh, the vulnerable sector of our society. Uh, and, and that way, yun lang po, um, we can prevent that the hospital system will not be overwhelmed. So um, that, that's the story in, in our locality. Um, but um, uh, we are just uh, thankful that uh, uh, we have sufficient uh, supplies of vaccines uh, for our uh, healthcare workers. Okay, well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. How about Cagayan de Oro? Uh, Jore or Raul, kamusta ang vaccination sa inyo? Um, Susie, for Northern Mindanao Medical Center, we have vaccinated about 98% of our personnel, about 1,750 of them. And we also help the city in the vaccination campaign. We have a team of vaccinators in the in our hospitals. We are assigned in a mall. We have so far vaccinated around more than 30,000. That's in addition to the 100,009 that has been done by the city. Their target is about 518,000 or 70% of the 750 population of the city to the world. So that's how we contribute to the city as a whole in, in terms of uh, campaign for vaccination. We have already fully vaccinated 10,000 of the city residents and 20,000 for the first dose. That's for uh, uh, Sinovac, uh, Sputnik, AstraZeneca, and uh, Pfizer, including j, j starting yesterday. Okay. Uh, yes, so see, currently in the entire country, we have 17% uh, vaccinated with first doses and only 8% with full vaccination of the entire country's uh, adult population. And here in NCR, we're 30% vaccinated with one dose and 16.7% for uh, fully vaccinated. So it's still very, very low. Raymond, you had three questions. Eh. 
So uh, I think some of the questions got one of the questions got answered. But what were the other two right, questions? Right. Yeah. The other yeah. questions, po, is that uh, uh, I've already dismissed it. But uh, the other one was um, if you are vaccinated, does it only cover certain variants, or does it cover all of the variants? I think that was uh, one of the important ones. Uh, there's another question po as it relates to um, the efficacy of the vaccines and is it high time for us to consider booster doses, that sort of thing. Uh, so, yun po uh, are the questions as it relates to vaccines. Oh, uh, Raymond, uh, I'll okay, answer that. Uh -oh. Go ahead po. There's no study uh, showing that uh, we need booster doses at the moment. So, what we actually need is to ramp up vaccination for the population, especially ang pinaka, uh, I think uh, we're lagging behind, is vaccinating the senior citizens and uh, those with comorbidities. Kasi uh, if you compare that with the general population, hindi nagkakalayo if our uh, vaccination for the general population is 8% fully vaccinated. Yun sa senior, mga 10 to 11 percent pa lang. Uh, when they should be at least like healthcare workers, mga 90 to 95 percent na at this point in time. So I think that's uh, where our healthcare workers should really concentrate on vaccinating the vulnerable, the senior citizens and those with comorbidities. Siguro I'll, I'll 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 throw that question to to uh Paokang no to to our USEC. USEC, paano ba nating mababakunahan tong mga senior natin? Parang mukhang yan talaga yung pinakaimportante no. But uh what do you see kasi I know you're always in the field there. Eh? What is it that works in terms of getting the senior citizens vaccinated? Yes. Uh ma'am for uh before that I'd like to uh, paint a uh, better picture doon sa mga percentage na binigay ni Sektao para ho makita yung ano, absolute number para mag, kasi kung percentage baka mahirapan silang mag-decipher no, no So total doses administered na po sa buong Philippines is about 15,953. So by this time it has hit January uh, July uh, uh, 21 pa po na data to so it must have hit uh, 16,000 or 16 million already and uh, SECPAW is true na mahirapan, mahirapan tayo sa priority 2 which is the senior citizen uh, we only have first doses to 2.7 or 2.8 million of this uh, 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 priority group has been vaccinated first dose um, fully vac uh, na, complete doses po is 1.3 million pa lang tama ho Roughly 10% pa lang ang uh, first, first dose and then uh, much lower ang uh, second dose. So, uh, sa first dose po sa lahat ko ng priority group 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10,722,000 pa lang ang uh, first dose and then 5 million ang, uh, uh, what's this, yung uh, completed the, the second dose. Uh, yun, Pa, dun, tungkol naman po, regarding the sec second question, uh, I might say na uh, this is uh, really the key to winning the race. No? We need, this uh, mga senior citizen are still, are still considered the undecided. Uh, uh, according to Pulse Asia survey po, uh, most vaccinated, uh, uh, or most of the Filipinos who opted not to get vaccinated or who are undecided said they would change their mind once they see their inoculated family members and friends in safe condition. So, tayo, we should be, uh, no, no, kaya nung sinabi ko po kanina, we, as vaccinated individuals, uh, be the walking testimonies that vaccines are safe and effective. I think, I think that's, that's uh, has, yung yun na makita nila, it will, uh, it will surely work. Uh, yung pong mga uh, sa pamilya nila, yung mga senior citizen, they would see, they would look at their sons and daughters muna. To, una muna kayo yung sa, sa bahay and then after all, after after uh, you, kami naman ang susunod. I think that's a good uh, uh, 
way of uh, saying na kaya mababayungan natin at paano natin sila ihikayat. Thank you very much, uh, Yusek Dumama. No? Um, I'm going to ask uh, a bit of a, uh, what should I say, a bit of a provocative question. Kasi uh, here in the United States, where there was a sur- where they saw surges of Delta, like Missouri, were places where there was very low vaccination. And doon talaga, uh, it was like the beginning of the pandemic. Yung pila-pila yung mga ambulansya sa labas ng hospital, uh, they were asking the other states to help them, no? And uh, wala nang ano, wala nang ventilator, wala nang space sa 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 loob ng hospital. So my question is this, right? For your particular locality, what do you think is is the most important thing you need to prepare in the event? Hopefully, God willing, hindi, no? But if we do go into a surge where talagang pipila na naman ng ambulansya sa likod ng sa sa no, no sa driveway nyo what's the most important thing you need to prepare in your locality so this will differ from place to place but i i like to get a sense of in terms of projecting or forecasting what is needed what do you think you need to prepare? I'm going to start in a different way. I think I'm going to ask uh, Sek Pao first. For the Red Cross, what do you think you need to prepare? Just in case, let us say that, because we saw this last week in the, um, we saw this last week in the, the webinar, no? that the spread was really exponential. No? Parang it starts low, but within weeks and then months. Ang dami biglang mga kaso. So, Pao, anong paghahanda ng Red Cross? Yes. Uh, Nag-freeze yata si Pao. Ah. Okay. Uh, Pao. I just like to add all... Hello? Hello? Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello? Go ahead, I go can ahead, see you. Oo. Um, um, for the senior citizens, the strategy of the Red Cross is to use our mobile bus services kasi alam naman natin they're not techie, they're having a hard time to go to the bus. Um, get our bus station. Okay, I think we lost uh, Sek Pao. In, hello? hello? We have our audio, so okay. please go okay. ahead, Sek Pao. Internet. Oh, okay. Uh, internet connection is unstable <laughs> but anyway uh, what we do is to use our mobile bus bakuna bus and we station it in one corner and then we call all the senior citizens to get vaccinated and we we can get as much as 600 to 700 in one setting so dapat siguro innovative tayo with when it comes to senior citizens they cannot be all brought to the bakuna center. The other thing that we do kagaya ng ginagawa ngayon ng Muntinlupa I think is that when the senior citizen come to our facility we also vaccinate the companion para parang may added bonus yung mga senior citizens so and their caregivers and their family members sinasama na rin namin so i think that's one of the strategies we can add now in terms of the red cross uh, initiatives we're putting up uh, oxygen generating uh, i know the the hospitals in mindanao Actually, we did that when I was assistant secretary for Mindanao. And uh, instead of relying on the supplier for oxygen, we put up oxygen generating plants in most of the DOH hospitals in Mindanao. And now there's COVID. They're actually self-sufficient. They can produce their own oxygen. And here in Red Cross, we're putting up two oxygen generating plants in Subic and here in Manila. Okay, thank you, Paul. Nina you. was raising her hand. Nina, go ahead. Um, I wanted to show lang our numbers kasi sabi yes, yes. Go ahead. kanina. Do it, do it. Can I share my screen lang? Of course. Yes, of course. Go, ahead. go ahead. Wait lang, wait lang. So... 
ito po. So, what we did was, um, panang before, meron kaming ganito, tapos in Filipino and in English, lahat ng mga memo, parang pina-powerpoint, saka infographics, para madaling maka-intindi lahat, no? Tapos, uh, I think ito yung isang parang we wanted to share kasi as as you see, yung uh, we've reached 6,000 plus vaccinated persons in our hospital. So that represents mga 85% plus among our PGH personnel, UP PGH personnel. And you've, you can see yung number of COVID-19 cases has dramatically dropped in the uh, in the last few months no from parang logarithmic nga yung drop tapos ngayon this month we're down to like 17 cases na lang from from in the time of the surge uh, close to 300 over a month so siguro kung may ganito tayong data sa ating mga hospitals and we can share this to the community baka yung mga vulnerable populations na may hesitation pa baka ma-convince na sila to uh, to get vaccinated. Yeah. That's what I wanted to share lang. And I also uh, congratulate yung Heart Cent uh, yung uh, Philippine Red Cross for all those initiatives um Secretary Pao kasi parang maganda sila to reach out to the ano to the senior citizens who are really very vulnerable. Yeah, there's a very interesting dialogue going on in the chat box about mobile vaccination. So, Pao, I think there's a great appreciation for the mobile uh, vaccination. And I'm sure that the, our hospital chiefs can also help help do that. But Nina, let me ask you that question. Uh, if there's a surge, you know, in the next few weeks, what is it that PGH really needs to prepare? Uh, well, um, yung ginagawa namin, we're really trying to get all our beds ready for the surge. So, di ba, kaka-surge lang kasi eh. So, yung oh. may mga wards and areas that we've uh, sort of uh, closed muna to uh, preserve our manpower. Pero we've uh, kept them prepared to be reopened as soon as um, uh, the surge comes to being, no? Tapos, um, there's also this uh, very new isolation facility, supposedly state of the art, siya, and we're going to be ready to open that in a few weeks. So that's part of our preparation for this upcoming surge or potential. Oh, Nina, if there's something that you think you might lack in a surge, what do you think it will be? Mm, ang, 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 namin ng ang, more nurses. Tao. <laughs> pa rin, tao. tao pa rin. Oo. Tao. So, right. nice. may mga, yeah. 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 Mga yeah, nurses who are available and willing to uh, be part of our staffing or staffing across the country, yun talaga yung kailangan eh. Willing personnel. Yeah. Right. That's similar to what uh, Raul said earlier, no, na, you can have all kinds of uh, technology, but if you have don't you don't have people, then you can't do anything. Raul, I'll go to you. What do you think you need if there's going to be a surge? Well, uh, what we need is uh, additional manpower because uh, we are hard on that. Uh, the DOH has uh, given us uh, additional nurses, but these nurses are usually not trained. So perhaps uh, the DOH can give us uh, additional manpower or who are trained to handle COVID patients. Or we probably need more uh, quick training, no? More training for yes. so that people can be immediately trained to handle COVID. Dr. Julius, kayo? Um, yes. Uh, thank you, Susie. Uh, as early as December, Meron na po kaming hinanda na surge uh, capacity preparation, no? which uh, at this point, uh, there were three, three plans actually. No? Uh, plan A, Plan B, and right now we are on Plan B na ini-implement na po namin. Uh, we have also cross-trained our nurses for uh, critical care and intensive care, um, care uh, process. Um, but you painted a very bad scenario 
uh, yung sinasabi niyo po Susi na nakita mo sa telebisyon that one state, uh, I think Minnesota, yeah, I saw that, na humingi na sila ng tulong sa ibang state. Uh, right now, we have around 500 uh, uh, staff no, na ni strategy namin uh, na just in case there's a surge, may meron kami ibabato na 500 na total. Okay? Medical, paramedical, uh, nurses, and all of that. Worst case scenario, yung sinasabi mo, uh, bad picture, uh, hard question, hard answer. Uh, if you may allow, <laughs> uh, Susie. Yeah, go ahead. Kung talaga magkaubusan na ng resources, no? uh, we, will, we will apply uh, the, the principle of, uh, of uh, mass casualty. And that is, kung sino ang fittest to survive, yun ang unahin namin. Uh, that decision was made, uh, that was last year. And um, uh, yun po, kung talagang wala na kaming ibibigay na resources, uh, human resource, uh, beds, and etc. Um, we, we will apply that, that principle, hard as it may be. But... Um, uh, that that is the last recourse, of course, and I hope uh, and I pray that we will not come into that. But I like to add, Susie, you know, um, as early as October, we know that this that COVID is here to stay. Um, it, it is not just um, you know uh, just a simple uh, allocation of human resource, but right now we're we're having uh, as Ted uh, stated. We we're already having a pandemic fatigue, you know, especially to our frontliners. And that takes a toll on emotional and mental health issues that's going on, uh, I'm pretty sure, in all hospitals. So that's the other challenge that we have to face, that we have to keep our, our uh, organization robust to become resilient. In order for them to be resilient, all aspect of... Uh, of human life should be addressed. And we're trying really hard, really, really hard to address this, no? especially the mental health issues. Um, we have, um, most of us has not taken a leave for a year. So now we are, uh, as mandated uh, by the Department of Health, which we are under the Department of Health, when a red alert status is, is raised, uh, all leaves, and, and, and other things uh, uh, are, are, are not allowed. But right now we feel that uh, we should um, slacken th those rules a little bit. Number two, um, number two concern that I have, and I'm sure all hospitals in the country, including Red Cross, is the financial sustainability to sustain this long-term uh, operationally draining uh, COVID. So um, again, uh, field health reimbursement remains to be desired. Uh, that's, uh, that's a subtle word. Um, but how do we sustain this in, uh, uh, logistically? And that's the other thing that uh, I think should be, uh, should be, should, we should tackle. We should be, uh, we should not be, um, uh, thinking of first two months or three months, um, that that those 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 things are really of our concern right now. How to sustain our operation? Um, we know uh, the economic uh, uh, ramification of this from the very start, but uh, now it's becoming apparent. Um, it's it's very hard now to support the operation with a very meager resources, um, especially the, uh, uh, the uh, financial component. So um, uh, thank you, thank you, Susie, for- uh, Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Julius, for that very thoughtful insight, which is more strategic, no, long-term, uh, that we can't just think of a few, a few months, we have to think about parang marathon, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, let's go to the Lung Center, Vince. Yeah. Sa tingin mo, ano ang magiging pangangailangan nyo kung magkakaroon ng surge? 
Well, uh, 80% of our cases actually are severe and critical. No? So basically, we, want, we would want to expand yung mga ICU beds namin. So uh, of course, it's uh, expensive to run these ICU beds in terms of uh, the monitoring they need, the, the medicines, as well as the health worker complement na kailangan. No? So that's what we are trying to build up right now, yung ICU, increasing our ICU beds getting uh, enough supply of the uh, drugs no uh, during the surge na medyo nagkakulangan sa remdesivir tocilizumab and hemoperfusion for our uh, severe critically ill patients so that's what we would want to ensure in case of an, another surge in terms of beds meron kaming uh, inaantay na completion of a 106 bed modular hospital. This is being built by the DPWH and hopefully it will be finished by August so that in terms of uh, total number, uh, we will have uh, 100 more beds for COVID patients uh, if there's a case of a surge. But we really need to uh, increase our ICU bed capacity also. Yeah, thank you. That's Vince Balanag of the Philippine Art Center. Uh, Doc Jore, kayo, anong tingin niyo dyan sa Cagayan de Oro? Ano ang magiging pangangailangan mo? Well, similar to the, the rest of the panelists, it will be the same. It's still people, your doctors or your, or your nurses. Because regardless of uh, whether you, have, you are fully complemented with staff, the moment they get COVID, even if they are vaccinated, you have to excuse them from work. Um, they have to be isolated. So it's the same as uh, being not vaccinated. You have to isolate them, whether even if it's mild or asymptomatic. So you 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 lose a part of your people for a time because you cannot let them get back to work yet. Yeah. So that's the scenario that we have. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Raymond. Over to you. Thank you, Doctor Susie. Um, oh, can I? Can I? Oh yes, uh, go ahead, you say kong. Go ahead, sir. Okay, to add to that, do yung DOH naman na, na initiatives. <laughs> Sorry, hindi ko kayo natanong, ha? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beeping up, we, we, we started beeping up our hospital and we know hospitals and other facilities, both private and uh, uh, public hospitals. Uh, I have been calling uh, Dr. Joe and uh, Dr. Julius. Pag kami mga impending uh, uh, surge, no? So we would like to uh, we ask them to please uh, increase uh, ag aggressively, uh, increase the dedicated uh, COVID beds, especially the ICUs in your areas. Uh, ensure the availability of uh, life-saving uh, supplies, meds, oxygen, uh, even PPEs, no? Yung HRH augmentation is perennial. Uh, uh, emergency hiring, we're doing emergency hiring. We're doing uh, emergency deployment uh, in non-search areas. Yung po po deep up no ano no. Even in the hospitals, we would like we ano no, we suggest or we recommend yung accordion principle. You must have heard of that no. To use or utilize uh, HRH equipment, drugs and medicine to search areas coming from the non-search areas. Even in the ano pa kapedi don sa sa ward that sa sa department tato na mga doctor can be assigned to, and the nurses can be assigned to uh, the search area. Um, I also agree with uh, Dr. Baines kanina na uh, yung spaces also is a uh, limitation. Spaces in the hospital, kapag wala ka na talagang, uh, even if you want to uh, uh, expand, pero pag wala ng space at wala ng budget, it's going to be very, very difficult. It's very important also, no? Hindi mo naman pwedeng pabayaan na lang yung May OB doon, tatanggalin yung OB, will not accept uh, OBGYN uh, patients anymore. Or pwede yun. Some have done that already, uh, Ma'am Susie. Yung mga surgical wards nila, yung mga, yung mga ortho wards nila were converted into ICUs and ano. Uh, yes. no? uh, then yun, of course, uh, we also would like to ensure the availability of testing kits, even the testing is for laboratory. And... Personnel pa rin in the laboratory is very important because three shifts pa rin yan eh. So magpa-fatigue pa rin. Alam mo yung kay Julius na sinasabi niya na merong 
pandemic, pati yung mga health frontliners natin. Hindi lang yung pan- frontliners na nagkaroon, nagkakaroon ng pandemic, pati now. Pati mismo yung community, ah, na ako mag, uh, mag, uh, mag-mask, wala rin naman eh, talaga namang ano na eh. Ta- tayo, nga, tayo nga, brother, meron ng Zoom patig. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> ko naman yun. Para na kami, para na tayo mga pusa, kakain sa kanto. Yung, uh, okay. Isa ka. Uh, And uh, to continue, yung ating uh, plan boss, yung ating uh, detection, we should... In- Correct. Oo, oh, yung detection natin. No? To, to, oh, baka pwede nga uh, yung contact tracers natin talagang hindi, sabi nga ni Mayor Magalio, Magal, Magalong, 1 is to 3 na lang ngayon. Minsan 1 is to 1 na lang ngayon. Dapat talaga, kung pwede, 15 is to 1 pa rin. So dapat we have should actively look for cases. Test all of these people uh, uh, through uh, RT-PCR. Of course, nakikita na natin yung mga enthusiasm ng ating mga LGUs to put up num- uh, additional number of uh, TTMFs. No? Pero hindi pa rin sila po na, no, eh, hindi pa rin, na, hindi pa rin baga meron pa rin mga LGUs na tama na sa amin to may hospital naman so that's uh, what uh, the Department of Health is doing to come up with a strategy to be able to engage with these LGUs na to ano to because this we know that this is a, a national government enabled pero LGU ano naman to LGU ah uh, uh, led no LGU led and then then people centered yung initiative I hope uh, uh, magagawa ito lahat. In fact, uh, uh, yung mga hospital natin, especially pinakamahirap sa lahat, yung private uh, private hospitals, to convince them to please uh, increase aggressively your, your uh, uh, yung uh, capacity po. In fact, uh, mayroong mga regions na 12% lang ang increase ng ano, supposed to be about 20 or 30%. Yung mga public po natin, wala problema. Uh, in Dabo Regional Medical Center, 50%, uh, 600 beds siya, 50% uh, dedicated na to, ano, to COVID. So these are the, some of the DOH uh, initiatives. Hey, 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 brother, yun na nga ang problema. Yung ating PhilHealth reimbursement rate, yun ang malaking problema. Kaya ma- ma- hindi na rin masustain ng mga private hospital to increase the number of beds kasi ala na rin silang tao. Pangalawa, maski mayroon silang pang sweldo, wala na rin silang ma-hire. And kung mayroon naman silang ma-hire, ay, uh, uh, you know, uh, iilan lang because uh, we have to understand that uh, they have to maintain uh, the balance uh between uh, their their uh, their their income and uh, and their um and, and their capacity to uh, to pay so basically it's the sustainability um it's um uh, sa compliance uh, i assure you uh, uh, my uh, my boss that um, sa sa iyong sa iyong um, uh, what they call this, sa uh, mga sakop, no? which is Visayas in Mindanao, uh, every every period, kama and exclamation point ay sinusunod po namin. Ala ho kayong problema sa mga DOH hospital. But uh, again, the DOH hospital has its own limits also. And remember, hindi namin pwedeng pikitin yung aming mga mata doon sa mga pasyente na nangangain na hindi COVID, na nangangailangan din ng hospital care no uh, and if i may interject no um, yung um, yung aming mga programa na naantala noong 2020 ay puspusan naming binabalik ngayon like uh, for example yung aming kidney transplant and uh, cardiovascular program ay ibabalik namin ngayon despite the covid and ang aming philosophy ay we will not let covid imprison us uh, we will find ways uh, to continually serve these people who are in need uh, in the community. So, doble po ang exposure ng, uh, ng aming uh, uh, sustainability. No? Uh, yung non-COVID at saka yung COVID. Uh, but this COVID uh, thing is eating up our, our resources. And uh, the, the main source of our sust- financial sustainability is field health. So, um, uh, medyo mahaba-haba usapan yan. 
and if these are these things are not in control uh, we are not in control of this um, so uh, probably um, uh, 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 we can um, we can also do something about about this uh, so that um, we can be survive this together and be well together so thank you uh, thank you yeah thank you thank i you. think uh, sec pao is also saying in the chat that uh you know phil health needs to pay for all testing okay raymond <laughs> over to you raymond yes yes thank last you last question na tayo, last question na last question need. dr susie uh, and this uh address po dun sa ating mga may testing centers uh, based on your based on the data that you currently have um, what, what's the percentage po of breakthrough infections among vaccinated individuals? I understand that in the new case investigation form, uh, whether the, the person that is going to be tested, uh, tinatanong na po kung nabakunahan na po siya or hindi. So, uh, have you looked into ilan po ba yung nag-positive sa inyong mga samples as nag-indicate siya na nabakunahan na po siya or fully vaccinated na po siya? Um, I'll address that to uh, Philippine Red Cross, Sec Pao, and then uh, any other uh, speakers can chime in. Po. Wala pa kaming data, but I think FDA is uh, uh, getting all the data. FDA. Yeah, and they're investigating actually all those na nag-positive, uh, nag-COVID and uh, vaccinated. They, they do a very thorough investigation. Nagulat nga kami. They check the cold chain. They check the lot number of the vaccine. And uh, even go back to the bakuna center kung anong uh, nagkamali sa Amalit. bakuna Amalit. center. So it's not just about the numbers. Yun yung sinasabi ko about Indonesia and the Sinovac thing na maraming nagka uh, sakit it's not just about the numbers it's about maayos ba ang cold chain maayos ba ang pagbabakuna uh, what were the situations in the hospital baka naman mataas yung viral load etc so it's that, not that, just numbers that, that, that question po kasi sekpao uh, came about just because there are individuals who have been vaccinated po no and then have been asking if i get, if i'm fully vaccinated and i get exposed but i don't have any symptoms that sort of thing uh will i still have to do the uh, testing on the fifth day or on the seventh day so may may alin langan pa rin po no? kasi parang there's the, uh, i don't want to call it complacency pero let's call it uh, as such na kapag nabakunahan all good, parang ganun, ma'am. So, uh, what, what, what's ah, okay. your opinion with regards to that po? Just to inform everybody, we have had our med techs and our staff na nabakunahan na, nagkaroon pa rin ng COVID. So, we treat them like it's a new infection. It's uh, entirely, parang walang special treatment yung mga nabakunahan na, na nagka-COVID. Parang uh, you start with uh, day zero. And then you isolate them, you do everything, you watch out for signs and symptoms. So, yung, yung pa rin yung, ano. But uh, I was telling you kanina, ha, when we report that to the OH, they do a very thorough investigation what happened to that particular case. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think we're uh, close to if the I top may... of the hour now. And we're going to ask. Oh, sige. Uh, uh, Dr. Raul Dr. has a rejoinder. Dr. Raul? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if I may share uh, with our experience with the uh, one and only Delta case. Well, the, the particular uh, uh, caregiver uh, was fully vaccinated. And uh, he developed only mild symptoms. And the five uh, close contacts in the hospital um, were all negative for COVID tests. So I hope that uh, this can reassure the public that uh, the, the effect, the impact of vaccination. Okay, thank you very much. We are at the top of the hour, close to the top of the hour, and we're going to give our panelists a few minutes to think about their last short, last words to our audience, mainly frontliners from all over the country who are watching you and really appreciating all the things that you're saying. Um, while we're giving you that chance to talk, Raymond's going to do the evaluation. Go ahead, Raymond. 
Thank you, uh, Dr. Susie. So, uh, we will not be taking this down even after I've gone through the questions. But uh, we hope that our nearly 2,000 or well, 2,000 upon no, still who are logged into Zoom will be able to answer this assessment questionnaire. As I cannot follows, vote, no? I cannot vote. <laughs> <laughs> panelists yeah, kayo, Yusek Okang eh. Oh, sir. So the panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. The panelists are well prepared and organized. Panelists spoke clearly and audibly. Panelists used appropriate language with technical medical jargons adequately explained. And then finally, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing various key COVID-19 health issues. We are seeing... Uh, a whole lot of our uh, Zoom attendees answering, so please key in your answers po. But before we go into our final message, I think uh, Dr. Nina Berba had the one final rejoinder, Dr. Susie, before we go to the final message. Dr. Sure, Nina? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, dun, sa, dun sa tanong na ano, kung uh, na-reduce yung um, incidence and prevalence of the uh, COVID-19. So, um, kasi before we used to have like uh, hospital wide uh, testing ano. So during that time, uh, mga yung wala pang vaccines, mga we run around 1 to 2% prevalence of uh, COVID-19. Uh, ngayon we're down to 0.6% sa PGH. So I think that's a significant drop also in the number of infections that we're encountering because of vaccination. Okay, thank you very much, Nina. All right, we're going to have our final short messages from our uh, our guest today. We'll start with Vince Balanag, uh, the Executive Director of the Lung Center of the Philippines. Vince, yeah, we need minutes. to assure the public that uh, we are doing preparations for any possible surge. So, um, but ang appeal lang natin is, uh, of course, have yourselves vaccinated uh, so that uh, we will there will be less chance that you will be symptomatic. No? So, and of course, if you have symptoms, you have yourself checked immediately so that uh, if ever you have COVID, then this can be managed immediately and not go to the hospital in severe or critical ill condition. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Vince Balanag. Let's go to Dr. Jore of the Northern Mindanao Medical Center in Cagayan de Oro. Dr. Jore. Uh, good afternoon again. Thank you for this opportunity you gave us to, to voice out and hearing things on the ground about COVID-19 and especially this new thing about uh, Delta variant. Yeah, it's here, probably here to stay. And as Dr. G Julius Trilon said, we have to attend to COVID and non-COVID patients. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go to Dr. Raul Andutan, the Medical Director of Maria Reina Xavier University Hospital, also in Cagayan de Oro. Well, we have been talking about increasing hospital capacity, increasing uh, vigilance, increasing vaccination. But I think the message is we have to inform the, the public that the battle is not in the hospital. The battle is in the community. And uh, the, the main challenge actually is how to increase the sense of responsibility of the public to pro protect themselves and to prevent the spread of the virus. And to the people in Cagayan de Oro, Northern Mindanao, I just would like to reassure that there is a good referral system between government and private hospitals, and we are ready for any search. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Raul. Let's go to Nina Burba of PGH. Nina. Yeah, so um, my final message to everybody is that uh, we need to keep everybody um, brace themselves for a possible surge. So our, kasi lahat naman tayo, maybe most of us in the audience are part of some kind of a system or health health system or a health network, we need to tell everybody that uh, I assume na lang natin na everybody or all the cases may potentially be a Delta variant. Um, yung, yung isang case na nakita namin sa PGH, which ended up as a mortality na Delta case, uh, it could have been potentially parang naging uh, problematic, no? but our emergency room doctors and nurses were all just 
hindi pa nila alam na COVID, pero they, the suspicion was high, the level of suspicion was high, and everybody really protected themselves. And in the end, even kung sobrang daming nangyaring procedures, nag-code sila, they tried to save the patient, walang na-infect. So all our precautions are effective. We just need to really use them. We need to always be vigilant. And that's the message to all our healthcare workers, to be always on top of the situation, universally practicing all the precautions that we have in place. Thank you. Thank you very and much. Good luck to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. That's Nina Berba of the Philippine General Hospital. Dr. Julius Drilon of the Corazon Loxin Montilibano Memorial Regional Hospital. Dr. Um, Julius. Thank you, TVUP, for having me. It's really an honor and a privilege to, to join in, you in this um, very prestigious uh, webinar. Um, I only have three, uh, Susie. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, one is this situation is bigger than ourselves, bigger than anything else, bigger than, than, than our understanding. Um, so, um, which I've been always doing this, one is pray, pray and pray hard. You know, and thanks for the blessings that we're, we're having and, and the opportunity that we're having right now. Two, I would like to, to thank my fellow workers in Corazon Luxin. Uh, they've been very brave, uh, they've been very resilient, and um, uh, I want to let them know that I'm, I'm very proud to be and honored to be working uh, with them. And three, to our community in Nagros and Bacolod, we assure you that Corazon Loxin will be on the top of the situation. To be honest with you, um, you, you we are your best hope. Uh, if uh, you get COVID in, uh, in Negros. And we will give you the optimum care that one is, uh, that is expected of us. So thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Thank you very much. This is Dr. Julius uh, Drilon. Uh, Pao, Dr. Pau Obiel of the Philippine Red Cross. Pauline, go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Susie and TVUP for this opportunity again to be part of this webinar. And uh, before I started talking, I was moved oh, we lost you. We lost you for a few seconds. Go ahead. Again, again. Mukhang bouncy ang internet ni Pauline. Wow. By Dr. Julius Drilon. Ano? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Can you oh, hear go me? Ahead. Oh, yes, we go lost ahead. You for a few seconds. We lost okay. you for a few seconds. Go ahead. So I was just touched by the words of Dr. Julius Drilon, but I think all of us are in this stage na we're really trying to do our best. And I would like to thank all the frontliners out there for keeping up and uh, doing a good job. And I think the positive thing in this webinar is what Dr. Berba said, that even if they face Delta variant, uh, it can be um, stopped, it can be controlled. You just follow protocols, practice universal precaution, and uh, stay safe. And, uh, and then the message again is to pray because this is beyond us. Uh, if God wills it, it will happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, not, last but not least, uh, Under Secretary Okang Dumama, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum again. Good afternoon once again. Uh, I wish to thank uh, everyone for sharing and, 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 and being active participants, especially our viewers, who are very enthusiastic in throwing <laughs> their questions. No? To the panelists, thank you very much for the explanation. It was really uh, enlightening. Ma'am Susi and uh, TBUP, uh, I'm so, uh, I appreciate the invitation. I'm so glad to be here. Also, I'd like to uh, say this, that I'm so happy to see uh, my former boss, uh, Secretary Porino Bial, if he does. And for my parting messages, I wish to reiterate the minimum public health protocols physical distancing, uh, wear your face mask and face shields, sanitize your hands, and more, 
more frequently and get vaccinated now. Like I said, our efforts are, are only as good as the people's compliance. All of us need to cooperate and do our own share to break the chain of infection. Otherwise, we might have to content ourselves living in this kind of condition until a definite cure is available. Meanwhile, in close coordination with the LC LGUs, we would like to strengthen our uh, uh, border control measures and improve further our surveillance and contact tracing. We need to intensify our PDITR strategies to ensure that uh, we manage COVID-19 promptly and, uh, and properly. Wag ko kayong magalala, ang Department of Health po ay gagawin, ginagawa at gawin po yung ating makakaya. And lastly, I'm appealing to all the eligible populations who are still skeptical of the safety and efficacy of the COVID-19 vaccine. Let me say this. If you are still having second thoughts on what is the best vaccine, my answer would be, you must, heard, you must have heard of this all the time. The best vaccine is the one in your arm. On getting anxious about uh, adverse uh, effects or event following immunization, or AFI, my reply is, you are more likely to get infected with COVID-19 than getting the AFI. Therefore, visit your nearest vaccination sites and get your jobs now. Thank you and have a wonderful day to all. Okay, thank you very much. That's uh, under Secretary of Andumama of the Department of Health. And before we have our closing remarks from um, Chancellor Manchit Padilla, we have our public service announcement from uh, TVUP. Again, our reminder uh, reminder to uh, have our seniors vaccinated. Go ahead, TVUP. Bye, po. Salamat po. Mama, bayad po. Ako, anak. Sabi mo na yan. Para masuklian ko ang mga sakripisyo niya sa taong bayan. Mapagbigay po kayo. Nakikita ko ang mahal na mahal ninyo ang inyong pamilya. Tama ka. Kaya nag-aalala ako. Paano ba matatapos itong pandemyang to? Para matapos, umpisahan na ninyo. Magpabakuna na kayo. ko kayo, magpapabakuna ako. Okay, thank you very much, TVUP, for that, uh, again, very touching, uh, touching public service announcement. Okay, so we will now go to our closing remarks from Chancellor of UP Manila, Dr. Menchit Padilla. Menchit, go ahead. Today's webinar was opened by Dr. Ted Herboza, who said that the graphic images of the havoc created by the Delta variant in other countries remind us of the continuing challenges. With the Philippines still, still the lowest in the region, with daily numbers plateauing at 6,000, we should, we should continue aggressive measures, aggressive testing, contact tracing, treatment, and isolation. So Dr. Ted said, let us plan, prevent, and prevail. Thank you, TBUP, for preparing a recap of uh, last week's webinar where Delta variant was extensively discussed. So if you haven't watched it, go check the replay and uh, get the extensive discussion on the Delta variant. Yusek Dumama gave us an overview of the strategies. And he said that it pays to be informed, but this information needs to be translated to positive behavior change. You know, what's interesting, he said that, you know, it only takes 21 days to form a habit. And he challenged us to actually look at the uh, advice coming from DOH. So please go check the DOH website and learn again about the, B the PDITR, B BIDA Solution, BIDA, BIDA Bastonera, the ICRA, ICRA, as well as the four-door policy. He emphasized the importance of the partnership between the national and local government, as well as the people. 
Now, going to our guest, um, they what I've done is I've actually grouped their, their answers, and it's interesting on how they responded to the questions. So all of them were asked about their feelings and expectations with the announcement of the Delta variant. Some were expecting it. Some did not expect it to come this soon. But what I'd like to share with you is the sharing of Dr. Nina Burba. And she said she had the feeling of fear and relief um, having uh, the three cases in PG, first three cases of Delta landing in PGH. Despite the, uh, the fear and uh, uncertainty whether it was Delta and eventually became Delta, no health worker was infected. And this means that the health workers are following the health protocols. Now, there was a big discussion on the current, the concerns, the, ur the urgent concerns among the hospitals. And repeatedly, our guests, we heard from our guests, we are not testing enough. And if there are Delta patients with Delta variant, we do not know who they are and where they are. But we also heard from them that considering the limitation of testing capability in the Philippines, testing must be focused. Now on the issue of genomic surveillance, yes, genomic surveillance has not reached the community extensively. We are not getting the real picture in the community. So for the inform information of our viewers, we have three UP genome centers, one in Manila, one in the Visayas, one in UP Visayas, and one in UP Mindanao. But only the UP, only the UP Philippine Genome Center in Manila can perform the sequencing and the bioinformatics analysis. This is, these are very highly skilled um, um, skills. These are skills that, you know, that, that will need extensive training. The turnaround for testing is actually 750 tests every three to four days. Now, PGC Visayas and PGC Mindanao have the skills, the human skills, but they need to upgrade the equipment to allow them to perform the sequencing and the bioinformatics. So I'm really hoping that the funds are urgently allocated to PGC Visayas and PGC Mindanao so that we can respond to the demand from the rest of the country. So yes, we need more genome centers. A final major concern is the long-term planning for sustainability of COVID and non-COVID operations, considering the meager resources, especially among the, the government hospitals. And again, you heard it again and again, it means that we need more health workers equipped to manage COVID patients. And do not forget, we're talking about COVID and non-COVID patients. So just some final take-home messages for our viewers. No single strategy is sufficient to protect our people. So we must remember that the battle is not only in the hospital. It is also in the community where everybody must have a sense of responsibility to prevent the spread of the virus. So remember, Universal protection is most important, regardless of the variant. And yes, we need more testing. At ang pinakamimportante ng mensahe, magpabakuna tayong lahat. Maraming salamat po, and back to you, Dr. Susi and Raymond. Thank you very much. That's our Chancellor of UP Manila, Dr. Menchit Padilla. All right, next week. Nako, ah, Raymond, did you want to show the poll results or? That just no, there's up. a there. Well, it's it's uh, well similar to what we have in the previous webinars, but wherein we have uh, majority uh, leaning towards strongly agree and agree. I also saw in the chat that there was at least uh, I think two who indicated na strongly disagree pero na malilang daw po sila ng ano ng pagtindot. It should have been strongly agree. So <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Opo. Thank you so much to the 1,474 uh, who were able to key in their answers po. Uh, I also like to thank, uh, take this opportunity to thank those of our nearly 3,500 registrants all, all across the uh, country and also globally who, are, who have uh, expressed their interest and have attended po. All the way from Natonin RHU in Mountain Province in Cord the Cordillera. Association of Municipal Health Officers in Iriga City in Bicol, Lorenzo D. Zyko District Hospital in Negros Occidental, the Philippine Rheumatology Association in Malaybalay, Bukidnon, 
also internationally Liverpool Hospital in New South Wales in Australia, Shinagawa City in Tokyo uh, sa mga nag Olympics po, uh, uh, good luck. Uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, Doha, Qatar, Dubai, UAE, Alcobar, Saudi Arabia, North Delhi in India, Tunbridge Wells in England, Lautoka Hospital in Fiji, and Niagara Falls in Ontario, Canada. Over to you, Dr. Susie. Yeah, thank you very much, Raymond. I personally want to thank all of our reactors, our very distinguished hospital chiefs from around the country. And I think medyo napapalagay ang loob ng mga nakikinig sa atin pag nakikita kayo. And uh, hearing your vision, your uh, your your care for our frontliners, no? kasi talagang ano, ano, uh, lumabas din ito sa mga pinag-uusapan na napapagod na rin ang ating mga health workers and the community is also tired. But we fight, we go on, and we will work to stop COVID deaths. Anyway, next week, nako, we have a very exciting uh, webinar. Please don't miss it. Um, you know, sabi natin dito sa webinar na to, lahat ng klaseng talino ng mga Pilipino ay kailangan natin para mapuksa natin itong pandemya. And there are some scientists who have been quietly working on new technology created by Filipino scientists, world-class Filipino scientists. And we're going to have this conversation will be led by Raul Destura, who is the Deputy Director for uh, Strategic Initiatives and Emerging Programs. Yung pong gumawa ng unang Philippine uh, test kit, si Raul Destura is going to be leading this discussion. But we have several scientists who have um, our own Philippine versions of a ventilator, sanipad, o pang, ano, pang disinfect ng mga health workers natin, uh, PPE, at marami pang iba. So next week po, do not miss it kasi dapat kinikilala talaga natin na ang lumalaban talaga dito, hindi lang front line, hindi lang yung uh, second line, yung third line. Pero meron ding mga nag-iisip, paano ba tayong gagawa ng teknolohiya na abot kaya ng lahat ng ospital, ng health center, ng mga districts dahil gawa at sariling atin. So don't miss it. It's called Laging Handa World Class Filipino COVID-19 Innovations. That will be next Friday. And uh, Raymond, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Susie. I think before we adjourn, uh, I'd, I'd like to take this opportunity po, no, to also greet those who are uh, watching us in the Facebook pages. I think there are those watching in the different pages, po, no, numbering at least in one page, numbering more than 600. There are those watching uh, in YouTube. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Please note that all of our webinars are archived. Uh, in those uh, social media accounts po that you are logging in, especially in Facebook, the University of Philippines, the Stop COVID Deaths, and the TVUP Facebook accounts, as well as the YouTube channel po of TVUP. So again, uh, very, very exciting topic po for next week. We will be talking about innovations and uh, ano po ba ang ating uh, mga naayambag uh, in terms of uh, bio-preparedness, uh, our dekalidad po, the world class po na mga Filipino scientists are really contributing in the fight against COVID-19. So makita-kita po tayo ulit next week. Same time, same channel from Friday to tw from 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's a date. Together, we can stop COVID deaths. So keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online. The enemy remains unseen. I'll keep your hand in mine. Let's say a prayer one more time. I know you long for home, but I am here, you're not alone. I'll stay with you until the coast is thin. The others pain before my fears The others laugh before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask Do I have strength to carry on? My God, how long will this go on? I need you here to keep me strong I'm here to hold the line I'll keep my head Until my time Say his name to realize It's fine to be afraid It's 
hold on to the word he gave This time will come to pass Cause this salvation's made to last He'll carry you to see the break of day The others pain before my fears The others vows before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask Do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong I'm here to hold the line I'll keep my head wet Until my head dies From my fears, the others lounge before my tears, but right behind the mask, I look into myself and ask, Do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'll keep my word, you would as mine. The others pain before my fears. Pushing on the spine of tears Please take us through another day Just hold my hand And I will hold the line I will hold